We're here a few kilometers outside of Montreal at a place that empowers disabled people. It's a robotics company called Canova. I'm John Biggs, and this is TechCrunch Makers. So here we are with Charles Aguirre, CEO of Canova. And Charles, you're going to show us some wheelchairs. This is a prototype yep. that was basically Canova's first product, I guess we could say. Can you describe what's going on here? Because this looks like <laughs> this looks like something out of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah, in, in fact, that was my uh, uncle' uh, wheelchair, mm -hmm. and he was the, the one who developed the manipulo, uh, which is the mechanical arm. So it was not yet a robotic arm. Okay. It was a pure mechanical uh, bicycle cable, a hot dog pincer, a desk lamp frame, and he has like 14 button to control that. He was uh, really an inventor. His name was Jacques. You know, micro switch, very sensible mm -hmm. switch. And behind, he put all the electronics in a Tupperware. That was in 92. And this is when I decided I want to be an engineer. So we evolve a bit from the mechanical arm to a robotic arm, but it's, it keeps the same functionality. It extends the reach uh -huh. of the person in the wheelchair. Uh, this is a full robotic arm, so it know where it is. Uh, you can set up preset position. You can control J. Cole, the robot, directly mm -hmm. with the wheelchair control or with an adapted control. Today we have uh, over 150 users in mm -hmm. Netherlands. They eat three meals a day with J. Cole. Wow. So they feed themselves. We say we need a robot that's going to be on a wheelchair, that's going to be easy to use, that's going to be lightweight uh, and low cost. And there was nothing on the market to do so. So we start from scratch. We develop the actuators. We develop the carbon fiber structure. We develop the integrated uh, control. So we don't, know, we don't need an external computer to, uh, to control the Jayco. Okay. It's all embedded inside the robot, and it's a five kilogram robot, so. All right, so it went from this, which yeah. is pretty cool, to this, which is really cool. Yeah. So why don't you show us uh, where you make this thing? Yeah, no problem. Sure. This is one of our shop. This is a typical setup where we assemble and repair the robot. But you're doing active assembly, this. so there's, these, these are circuit boards that are in the actuators. Yeah, exactly. It, it's really a modular system to make it easy to uh, build and make it easy to service. We assemble and validate all the electronics, all the mechanical parts, mm -hmm. just here. So it seems like a lot of people get manufacture their PCBs overseas and then manufacture the, the bigger metal metallic parts. So that's what you guys are doing? Yeah, exactly. Right, and cool. everything comes down to this building and then we assemble. We have another facility also. And how many there. robots can you build out of here, I guess a day? Pretty, we can do five robots. Okay. When you come down to final assembly, that's, mm -hmm. that's the easy part. It was built to be easy on that part. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. these are, this is carbon fiber shell and these are milled steel or aluminum? Milled aluminum. Aluminum, yeah. Everything is lightweight because mm -hmm. we're using the, you know, batteries. Okay. Either on wheelchair or robotic mobile platform, always run on batteries, so. The lighter you are, the less energy you and use. You powder coated it so you could hide the screw here. Is that what you guys did? No, in, in fact, uh, inside it's a coating to be uh, fireproof. Okay. Starting this year, we, we have the Miko, we have the Jayco, uh, we have a six degrees freedom arm, we have four degrees freedom mm -hmm. arm. So they all build from the same basic components. It's just how you assemble them okay. that's going to make different products. The day we realized that we had a lightweight portable robotic platform. Mm -hmm. Uh, many door opens to, uh, to, to Jayco. Mm -hmm. uh, it was built to go on a wheelchair, so integrating it to a mobile platform was quite easy. And as you know, there's so many mobile robotic platforms out sure. there that had no manipulation capacity. And it was built to be in direct control by a human. So you give to a technician control of Jayco, within the first five minutes, he's able to pour water, open a door, okay. pick things on the floor, uh, at the distance, so you know, fast learning curve. All right, so why don't you show us some of the actuators and the motors that you put in there? And as you can see, you know, we came from uh, that, that was that was okay. So you know, those are actuators for the fingers, mm -hmm. uh, some small actuator for the wrist, bigger actuators uh, for the elbow, the, the shoulders of the arm. We were born as an engineering company developing robotics. This is what we do still. Uh, we are opening new application. We just double our team. We have some interesting contract in healthcare mm -hmm. that we're going to announce 
uh, so soon, uh, shortly, uh, but we cannot at the moment. Okay. Record. Yeah, I saw these arms recently that they've connected in a kitchen that you can have the, have the robot cook for you. Yeah. When yeah. you guys got to do that too, right? <laughs> it, again, everything is possible, okay. uh, but we have to set priority. And here at Kinova, we want to change the world. All right. So doing dishes is great, but <laughs> I think we can have Changing more impact the world than that. Is a little more important. Yeah, exactly. All right. So this is what those guys are doing. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Thanks for having us here. This is a, this is a lot of fun. I'm John Biggs, and this has been TechCrunch Makers.